the Mavs won game seven against the Phoenix Suns, 123 to 90. I mean, a 33 point beatdown on the road in game seven. It's it's literally one of the most shocking results that I've seen by really any team in a game seven like this in quite some time. Um, when you look at the number one seeded Phoenix Suns, I mean, this is basically an utter collapse as far as I'm concerned. But when you look at it from Dallas's perspective, I mean, down 3-2 in this series going into game six, uh, they rose to the occasion, uh, won game six at home, and then they go on the road and just utterly dominate Phoenix in game seven. Just an absolutely unbelievable performance from Luka Doncic, drops 35 points. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie probably had the best game in this entire playoff stretch that the Dallas Mavericks have had. He dropped 30 points. And then Jalen Brunson also was very effective in this game as well. He dropped 24 points. So when you have Luka, Spencer, and Jalen combining for, what was it, like 94 points or like almost 100 points between the three of them? Yeah, at least just it was about. At, it, it was, it was like 30, 90, 35, so that's 65, and then 65 plus 24, that's 89, 89 points. 89. So, I mean, overall, just an absolutely phenomenal game from Dallas. Uh, they advanced to the Western Conference Finals where they'll face the Golden State Warriors. But, Kev, I just got to ask you straight up, what was your takeaway from this Game 7 win from the Mavericks? As a Mavericks fan, happy. Um, again, I still stand by the fact that I get scared every time we come. We become so shot-heavy and shot-reliant. We were 19 of 39 from the three-point line tonight, uh, 12 of 12 from the free-throw line. I mean, we shot as a team 56.8% from the field. So I was happy the shots were falling, but my biggest thing is defense. I mean... Phoenix could not do a damn thing. Phoenix couldn't get into a rhythm. Devin Booker couldn't get into a rhythm. CP3 seemed off all night. Um, they had a 10-point second quarter. I mean, at halftime, it was 27. They had 27 total points. Luka had 27 by himself. It was just an absolute annihilation, a slaughter. Uh, just There was not really many things that I could say to kind of describe this. And... I don't know, man. It, 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 from the beginning of the game, I was start, starting to get a little worried because Luca got comfortable. He hit his first two or three shots, so he started taking a couple more threes. Before you know it, he had already, I think, four three-point attempts in the first quarter, and I was just like, oh, great, here we go. Um, and then, like I said, Phoenix just started missing, and then we started you know, moving in transition. Spencer comes into the game. He scores a quick eight points. Before you know it, he's got 17 or 18 at halftime. Um, JB then takes over in the second half and he just starts going off and he starts scoring all these buckets in the third quarter and he ends up with 24. Um, but again, the, the, the thing for me is just that Phoenix never was able to get into a comfortable offensive groove. And I think that's in large part to how Jason Kidd kind of made adjustments. Uh, and he realized, you know, you double Devin the second he gets the ball, throw him off his game, um, you know, kind of be as physical as you can with him without, of course, injuring him or getting him to the free throw line, which, of course, he still hit some free throws today. But overall, um, you kind of have to be proud because you're making other people beat you. We all know that the way to beat Chris Paul is to get him tired from actually having to guard somebody. And no disrespect to Chris Paul with him being on the older side, him being a little undersized as, as, as a defender in general. Um, you know, you kind of force a switch just like Devin Booker and... and <laughs> And Chris Paul were making fun of it earlier. They were like, oh, when, when Luca's matched up on us, we're not really worried about it. Well, joke's on you, asshats, because, you know, we had to make you work for it, too. So uh, you can't always have your cake and eat it, right? That's what they always say. So enjoy playing golf and enjoy that, uh, that Cancun trip, kid, because uh, it ain't making no difference. Dallas is moving on. I know I sound like a little bit of a tired, salty fan, but... I'm giving as much energy as I can right now. I'm super excited. Dallas was able to capitalize. We limited turnovers where we could. Um, we were able to kind of keep the, our foot on the gas pedal and kind of just keep getting shots. We were getting, uh, we were finding men open. We were attacking the rim. Uh, and I was just happy overall. I mean, you just kind of look at the box score from the Phoenix perspective. Devin and Chris Paul had 21 points together. Chris Paul had a negative plus minus of 39. Devin Booker had a negative 41. It was just, it was bad. I mean, as a team, they shot 37.9%. From the three-point line, they shot 35.3%. And the only reason that that percentage increased at all was because they hit a couple of threes in garbage time, and that's the only reason why they were able to kind of narrow the gap. Because at one point, I believe, Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong, it was like 46 or a 47-point game. And we almost made it a 50-point game. And Luka didn't even play the fourth quarter. Uh, a lot of our starters got pulled later in the third just to kind of make sure that everybody stood healthy. but. I mean, 
it kind of just goes back to what I said. Defense did what it needed to do. Their offense couldn't get it going. Jason Kidd is probably the MVP in my mind because he was able to change the culture in Dallas this season, change the mentality for it. Us just trying to outscore every team to us actually playing good, solid defense. We forced 12 turnovers on their side of the ball. And uh, I'm happy, man. We're moving on. I'm looking forward to it. The Golden State Series is going to be interesting. I can't be happier, but we sent Phoenix home. We beat the best team in the league, and it's not really much else you can ask for, bro. I'm just, I'm over the moon right now. I can't really, guys, I'm dead serious. It's so weird because I was telling Kyle, I don't have emotions because I'm almost in disbelief that it happened. I'm happy, but it's like, it's almost like I'm waiting to wake up from a dream or something like that. And I know it's only the second round. I'm not saying that, you know, we're going to the finals or anything like that, but for the series to start the way that it did, 0-2 in such a negative way, to get mopped up in Phoenix the first two games, to then end it in Phoenix and crushing them on their home floor, it, it, it's bittersweet. It's, it's actually kind of cool. Kev, I just want to kind of like go through like how I was watching the game in real time because, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, there's not really much left that I can say about uh, what Dallas did in this Game 7. I mean, it, from beginning to end, I mean, this is just one of the best games that you could hope for if you're a Dallas Maverick player or fan just because you beat the number one seeded Suns by 33 points in the basically the biggest game of the year. I, I don't think you could have asked for a better result. But it, like I said, when I was... I, I didn't even watch this game for the most part just because I was working. But I was paying attention to the game on ESPN and I saw that you know Dallas got off to a very good start and I was a little bit optimistic just for your sake because you know riding or dying with your team you know I'll Always. definitely I'll definitely respect that and then just like as the first half went on mind you I'm not watching the game um I'm just watching the plays that are going on on the game cast on the ESPN app and the one thing that caught me off guard just immediately was the fact that Spencer Dinwiddie was playing so well I mean, Spencer Dinwiddie, I mean, Kev, let's just face it. Like, he hasn't had that good of a playoff stretch with Dallas so far. But when it came to this game specifically, I mean, he got off to a great start. I mean, he was leading the team early on in the first half. I think uh, before Luka really kind of took off at the end of the second quarter. I mean, Spencer had, I think, 15 to like 18 points. At about 18, really, yeah? Yeah, by the end of the first half, maybe like with a couple minutes left in the second quarter. And then Luca just absolutely took off at the end of the half that put Dallas up by 30. I mean, Dallas was up 30 points, 57 to 27 at halftime. And in my head, I'm thinking the game's over. I mean, I mean, if this was like a 10 point lead, that'd be one thing. If it was like a five point lead, that'd be another thing. But when you're up 30 points at halftime, I'm sitting here thinking like the game's over. Like, Phoenix scored 27 points in the first half. I mean, 27 points is typically an output that you see within each quarter from each team. The fact that Dallas held Phoenix to 27 points in the first half is honestly one of the best defensive performances I've ever seen in a playoff matchup of this magnitude in a Game 7. And... You know, Dallas just really kind of carried it going into the second half. I mean, granted, I mean, Phoenix, I think they put up like 20, 25 points in this in the third quarter, but Dallas put up damn near like 40 in the third quarter. I think they put up like 35 to like 38 points, kind of somewhere in that margin. It, it just they were just knocking down shots consistently. And like you said, the box score kind of outlined the whole scenario with Dallas just absolutely taking over this game. I mean, 57% from the field. It'd make you think that was Dallas like the home team? Because, I mean, 50, like 56.8% from the field. I, you can't ask for a better shooting performance uh, from a team on the road in a game seven. It's just, all in all, I mean, I, I'm absolutely just blown away by what Dallas did in this game seven. I, I mean, to be quite honest with you guys, I think I picked the Suns to win this series in six games. And I picked them in six games just because I had to kind of respect the Dallas and what they've gone through this year. They they finished as a, a top four seed. Um, I thought that they were a team on the rise. I didn't think they would, they would actually get to a Western Conference Finals appearance simply just because I thought they were kind of one year away from that because it seemed to me Luka was carrying too much of the weight for this team or he was, you know, really kind of 
taking the majority of the shots uh, from everybody else with the way that Dallas runs their offensive setups. But they were able to find a way to just knock off one of the best teams, if not the best team in the NBA. And granted, I know we always kind of focus on Luka because he's like the main focal piece for Dallas. Spencer played probably one of the best games of his life. Jalen Brunson continues to be productive when it matters the most. And to be quite honest with you, Kev, this is one of the best defensive performances I've ever seen from a, a basketball team just based off the circumstances. I mean, a a game seven on the road, you're going up against a team that won over 60 plus games this year. And you literally just whop them off the court. It's, it's unbelievable as far as I'm concerned. And at this point, I'm kind of speechless in how it just unfolded because I didn't think that Dallas was going to do it, but I got to give Dallas a lot of credit. Uh, They came through when it mattered the most and they're moving on. And I got to give them respect for that. Kudos to them.